Friday, July the 18th, 2014. We are streaming live on YouTube at Beautiful Girl by Dana. And I struggle at the last second. Hello, Miss Milky the Clown, who never stops working. And uh, Stephen Meyer, Brian, Antherst, Aqua. We got quite a show for you tonight, everybody. Pia, Shock Hand, Surf, No More Sock Puppets, and Thirst, Roosevelt. Hey, here we go. That was a rough show trying to get on. Oh my goodness. Now 127 of those windmills catch fire average a year. They've been trying to say it's about a dozen. Okay, the stream is up and running. Looks good. My goodness, I got one for you tonight. <laughs> it seems like every night I don't think I can get any better than what I've done the night before, or say when I finish the show tonight, I'll think this, I can never do better, and somehow, sometimes I can pull it off, but not all the time. So, first there's a clip of a lady in Japan who has a message, and I got this from Miss Milky, if I remember correctly. Here we go. Hello, 今からでも最小限に食い止めていくためにどうぞお力を貸してくださいますよう心よりお願い申し上げますと the people of the world we'd like you to be aware of dangerous developments in Japan and pay attention to them we need your helping hands to our activities toward the minimum damage of nuclear power disaster thank you Okay, thank you so much. Yes, indeed. Thank you. 2,000 bombs a year is what Japan is claiming that they might get up to if we leave them alone. Can you imagine that? What do they need that for? They use two bombs in history the society has. So why would they need to reprocess it to make 2,000? I just wanted to get that out there because that's an important headline to have it of how crazy things are with all the carnage they got done that they're considering something like that is it's reprehensible absolutely it's like we're coming to rescue japan and at the same time they're all jumping off a cliff you know there's cooperation to do something cool but the result shouldn't be everybody running off a cliff just because follow the leader is cool in 2014 doesn't really resonate for many people. I got an unusual one coming up. This one is about two minutes long and the whole interview is below. I'll get rid of my microphone for that one. I want to click over to it. And it's... Ooh, Dana, hang on. Yeah, I can't get his name here. Uh, Timothy Mosur, he's a, he was originally trained in Canada, in Montreal, as a professor, and he makes a stagger in the statements here, and we'll just pop that out there, you can watch that, and I just, it just came out last night at the Congressional Library for the Americans, and let's just play it and we'll talk about it after, it's two minutes long or so, it's quite interesting, here we go. from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Today's speaker, uh, Tim Musso, uh, maybe I say Tim, Professor Tim Musso, um, currently a professor at the Department of Biological Sciences, University of South Carolina. He has over 160 uh, publications, uh, probably a lot more now. All right, so Chernobyl, 1986. Uh, we just had the anniversary not too long ago, 28 years ago. Major catastrophe, uh, lots of design problems, human errors, but you know, there's lots of discussion of that. But the fact is it happened. Uh, nuclear fire burned for 10 days, released absolutely enormous amounts of, of, of radioactive contaminants, both in the, the form of fission products as well as in the form of particles of unspent fuel, plutonium. Uh, released and scattered across the environment. Most of it, of course, is in Ukraine and Belarus and parts of southwestern Russia, but also vast areas of Scandinavia were significantly contaminated. 
uh, ironically, uh, parts of uh, Austria near the International Atomic Energy <laughs> Agency offices, uh, northern Italy, and even parts of the UK up in Scotland were affected to the point that they couldn't eat the animals, uh, they couldn't harvest the sheep, for instance. Um, so vast areas, about 200,000 square kilometers at minimum, were contaminated. Fukushima, uh, the second largest disaster. Probably, you know, if you had to you know, ballpark it, uh, you would say that it was about a tenth the size in terms of the impacts to terrestrial systems. Um, of course, we have no idea what the impacts will be on the marine side. Again, very little research is being done there other than to catch a few fish now and then and see how radioactive they are and a little bit of modeling going on to see where these contaminants might end up, but, but not a whole lot of investment, really. But here's a, here's a, a map, citizen scientists generated map of contamination uh, uh, about a year after the event. And you can see this part of Fukushima, very highly contaminated, but even parts of northern Tokyo have quite significant levels of, of contamination that certainly most of us in this room would not want to uh, experience on a prolonged basis. I think a short visit <laughs> is not a problem, but at least to my mind, but uh, not everybody feels that way either. I make this point at every talk because I, I, I frequently, I don't know why, but I frequently get invited to speak to anti-nuclear activist groups. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's like, my goodness, man, they got no shame, they got no pride, they got no soul, you whack job. Sorry, folks. Look, uh, I know if people see me leaving up a cigarette and, you know, it's got no filter, because the filter makes the, the particles smaller to get through the laundry of your lungs, and it hasn't got 4,000 chemicals. And so we looked at 4,000 chemicals. And your average cigarette does. So this is just tobacco. And I don't smoke only a few a day. In fact, I rarely smoke any more since I smart started smoking these. Now, for him to say 200,000 kilometers, and that's about half of Japan, but actually all of Japan is contaminated. And for him to say that it went across oceans over to Scotland and Ireland, they couldn't eat the sheep and couldn't eat the cattle, but it couldn't make it across to America or Canada is bizarre. To say that it's one tenth to size, when what you got to realize is uh, Chernobyl was one third to size. There were 600,000 went through Chernobyl, and that was the comparisons he was making. So 600,000 conscripted soldiers and 400,000 other people were pulled into that. And it was so dangerous. These people were only on the roof for 15 seconds, and then they went home and never went on the roof again. In Chernobyl, they're using homeless, but but uh, or Fukushima, they're using homeless. In Chernobyl, was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. Chernobyl was a 30 percent meltdown. Chernobyl was used in graphite. Fukushima is using MOX fuel. Fukushima has three melted reactors. The litany and the list and the differences are extraordinary. You know, there were 600 helicopter pilots that went in and dropped boric acid and lead and everything else on the sarcophagus, try to create a sarcophagus so people can get in and work on it. So all 600 of the pilots, the helicopter pilots at Chernobyl died, all 600. And you know, why are they putting lead around them? It's because of the neutrons and the x-rays from the chunks. But in Fukushima, they don't get that. They just get a paper suit. In Fukushima, they're using the homeless. He's not down studying Fukushima. He was uh, way off the coastline. Uh, let me keep going. Or anybody down there. Now, this next one is... I'm just going to keep jumping because we've got a whole bunch to get through tonight. But that, that one to me really stung because that came out yesterday in the Congressional Library's uh, videos and they had, he was in there and told him that. And so now I'm going to bring in a Congressional uh, Nuclear Apologist. I'm going to light up my cigarette. Before I click, let me say hi to a few people, see if there's any questions. I've got to learn to uh, get questions from you folks. And the audio is turned on for the microphone again, so I just turned that off. We're going to jump to it in a second. And 
Miss Milky said, Dana, I think you, uh, I'm waiting. You've worked all the kinks out of your system. Give me a call and ride check. I will go on your, with your life. Sweet. I'm in for that one. I, I haven't stopped. I honestly, I haven't stopped. I got no idea how I even got on tonight. But uh, tomorrow I'll give you a call. I got your number there. I'll give you a call. And we'll start that process. We can try to reach out and see if I can import you while we're playing around and see if we can get that working because I need someone to help me and you'll be perfect. Ratchet will be perfect to get on for the first show. That'll be too cool. Let me jump over to and see I told you I had to come over and catch a comment. I just knew I know it. I got telekinetic. Uh, everybody go telekinetic, telekinesis, telekinara, kalakalula. The hell I was trying to make something up. But anyway, listen to this uh, loop uh, nut job at the Senate hearing about two months ago. I want you to <laughs> and I'm gonna rip him apart after. Here we go. Well thank you. Now with regard to this uh, pool storage, just because um, Mr. Uh, Austin Dog, just because uh, the rods are kept in a pool storage doesn't mean it's going to blow up or cause a fire. Does it? That, that is correct. The, uh, if I can make two technical points there, uh, studies of the pools at Fukushima, as the chairman mentioned earlier in, her, in response to question, to date we're not aware of any damage to the pools at Fukushima Daiichi as far as structural integrity. Uh, the spent fuel pool study that we based our decision on uh, had some significant conservatisms. We could certainly provide those for the record, but significant conservatisms that uh, showed Hang on a second, I smurfed that up. We were taking almost worst-case analyses and look at the integrity. And I'd also add that uh, the current initiatives being taken by the U.S. nuclear industry with respect to the, the FLEX program, mitigating strategies to add additional pumps, hoses, sources of water, uh, as well as the spent fuel pool level instrumentation requirements that we have levied, that those are other steps from a mitigation standpoint that have not been discussed today. Well, thank you. And <laughs> There's no damage. Look at that. I agree. Something wrong with my eyes. Something wrong with your eyes too. There's no damage. I perjured myself in front of Congress. Yay! <laughs> right the media's like, well, we can't call him out. He won't come on our show no more. <laughs> Like I was watch, I must have watched that four times in a row here just earlier. And I, was, I kept laughing and I couldn't listen to what he was saying. And I was going to do it this time, or I was going to stop it. And I knew I would have my blow up laughing every time. <laughs> I don't see no damage. <laughs> so like, what are you supposed to do against people like this? What do you say? <laughs> There's no damage! Will you people leave us alone? We... <laughs> Look, seriously, no. Does... <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face anymore. Does that look okay to you? Hang a shower curtain. Put up some drywall. <laughs> some more insurance. Think the insurance guy, think the house inspector will come by and say, well, you gotta put a chimney pipe up there. Afraid you're... Well, well you don't have to worry about ink on the roof. How, how does that work? There was no st structural integrity damage to the fuel. What? The fuel pool. No, there's no integrity damage to the fuel pool because it's not there anymore. 280,000 rods. There was 3,450 assemblies. And <laughs> I still laughs every time he thinks about it. 3,450 3, assemblies, each assembly 80 rods. Each rod is plutonium and uranium-238. Each rod is 18 pounds. A uh, single gram, a gram. Do your own math, divide a gram into 18 pounds, and consider that each gram is equal to every grain of sand on the beach in radioactive atoms and particles and isotopes and atoms, blah, 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 blah. Because when that building was cannibalized on the melted cores, that's create that's atoms too, and as you atomize it and aerosol it, that's no different than the radioactive material. See, and if you ingest it, you're getting an X-ray every moment of your life till the end of time. 
which is not that long because you'll get carcinogenic cancers. But yeah, no, the, the building is intact. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, oh yeah, man, that's intact. Now, I don't know if you noticed it, but that, oh, I probably can't get it tonight because I, I messed up. I gotta do a special video about the guy because he took his name tag off the desk later in that presentation. The guy he was talking to, right, the actual senator. Uh, senator, I think his name is Senators or something like that. This is his actual name. I'll, I'll get it here. I got another clip coming up in a little tiny bit. And the current um, president of, Poly of French Polynesian Attend, uh, intends to destroy the National Monument. And I think I got a picture of that there. That's that monument. And they're going to destroy the monument, and there's a lot of protest about that down there. Why would they want to destroy the monument? Well, between 1960 and 96, there was uh, 210 nuclear tests. 193 was in this from the France. 193 was in the French. Polynesian in the Southern Pacific and you know uh, think about what they're trying to do they're trying to erase the history of the contamination in that area because they're understanding that people are waking up and understanding that the area and so the value of the land goes down people don't want to go there they can't get any taxes to pad their pensions with to steal and so they just need to hide it they don't care about the people. They only care about getting a pension, which you only got to work four years to get your pension. So some really dark and twisted and demented stuff going on here where, you know, this was a blog uh, and, a, and a, uh, you can sign a petition not to uh, remove that. Why would you want to remove that? Because you're ashamed of what you've done and you don't want people falling out because you're still in power, right? That's exactly what's going on. I mean, if that's not damage, I don't know what is. If that's not wicked, I don't know what it is. That's unit three at Fukushima. That's 100% meltdown. It's missing. The fuel pools are missing. The building, a 10-story building is missing. It was atomized and aerosoled. This is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And because that's uh, Chernobyl is one third the size, and because Chernobyl uh, was a 30% meltdown, then the one you're looking at is 18 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. And it melted down, it aerosoled, and it evaporated in the sense of atomizing. And once again, 3,450 assemblies, 280,000 rods. Each rod is 18 pounds, and a gram of it produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet in their entirety. And if you were just to liberate all the grains of sands on the beaches on the planet, it'd be like a... a, a a snowstorm because these are invisible don't think that snowstorm doesn't exist and don't think that we don't have to deal with it don't think that it's going to go away uh, in 2006 the French medical research body found nuclear testing had caused an increase in cancers on the nearest islands and the French want to hide it right the implications they know what it is you can go look up Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless, New Mexico, and he fed the tiniest particles to beagles for 30 years, puppies and dogs, and murdered them. That's all he done for 30, almost 40 years at Loveless in New Mexico, and they're still doing it. So is a whole bunch of other laboratories. That one in particular is twisted. And they all died of cancer. All the animals died of cancer over those decades. And so 150 veterans and civilian workers who were present during the nuclear test they don't want to pay in pensions. They don't want to pay for the health care. They don't want to pay their families for the deformed children and the autoimmune deficiencies and the leukemias that showed up there too. You met one, you got to meet all of them. Here's the whack job again. And this time he's got, um, and if you go watch it, you'll see that he has his name on the desk. And I just got to get rid of my audio. 
Now he's going to say no one's ever got sick or died. So let's, that's just a short video. I'm going to get my headphones on so I can hear it. And let's play that. We have that. a different view. I think the good news is that in our nuclear power industry, unlike our coal, natural gas, oil, and other industry, we've not had a single uh, individual be killed in the entire process of that industry, nor have we had a person, to my knowledge, made sick as a result of uh, uh, nuclear accidents. So I say that to date we've had a pretty good record. I do have a... Yeah, you got a pretty good record. Was my audio off on one of the clips? Because you got to put your audio on every one of the clips. So it must have been... Um, okay, so... This one in, in, is... i got to scroll up and make it bigger so I can actually read it. He said nobody ever got hurt, nobody ever got died, nobody ever got sick, nobody ever got injured. It is way out of line. This is demented. Uh, for instance, back in 1946, way back then, someone dropped a screwdriver and he ended up dying. Got a thousand rads. 500 rads will kill you. Here's another one. Um, now, all these tests, 1,127 nuclear detonations, there was radioactive fallout. People died. People are still dying. P parents are liquidating their assets from the cancers they got from that. I mean, that is some seriously twisted stuff, besides the fact that they used radioactive materials during World War II to 829 pregnant women and mothers. They dug up their carcasses, I shouldn't say that, the corpses, after they died, without the family's consent. They, they told them they were vitamins and gave them shots and made them drink radioactive, man-made ionized, radiated elements that don't exist on the moon or in our solar system, they're not created by the sun, they're 100 part, they're not on the periodic tables, they're 100% man-made. i got to keep my eyes on the comment section because I'm afraid that I'm going to screw it up, but here we go again. The radioactive legacy of the search for Potopia. You should go watch that and read that. You know, go look up, there's, there's uh, documentaries on this, on Rocky Flats, there's documentaries, there's books on it. I uh, can't even remember the name of it. I downloaded all there recently and started chopping it up. I got it on my other computer. I'm starting to get a hang on things. I'm starting to get things together. You have no, it's, un it's unimaginable how hard I worked to get this in the last week. And I'm now I'm like I'm feeling refreshed. It's not like I'm worn out today. Today I'm like, okay, now I got it. Now I'm moving. Now you can't stop me anymore. I keep feeling like I'm being stopped uh, for some reason that I can't, and that's all in your mind, of course, right? And so we, not, I'm not like that all the time, but I, in the last week or so, because I can't conquer certain things on this and it frustrates me maybe, I don't know, but I don't give it up. I crash and burn, I get up, and I go at it again until I get it. You can't imagine what I went through last night after I was going through 200 pages. Let me keep going anyway. The inhuman radiation experiments, uh, victims include civilians, prison inmates, federal workers, done it to their own, hospital patients, pregnant women, infants, developmentally disabled children, military, poor, sick, elderly. These are the most demented people imaginable and a lot of them are still in the power structure. Uh, experiments involved in other radioactive materials, and we covered that one. I just wanted to have that picture, that connotation for everybody. <coughs> Let me come back here. I go over and say, make sure. Hi, Matthew. MSVS, Standing Foot, Ronald McKnight, Mickey Smith. Well, I get situated again. When I went to the green, there was no audio. Audio jumped or something. I'll watch it after and find out what that was all about. Uh, Punisher, Fix is Stupid, Nuts for Art, Tom Sims, uh, Cats Alive, Lunar, Aqua. Yeah. So if you're having problems with the stream, try lower quality, because I'm streaming in 1280 by 720. And if your computer doesn't have a dedicated graphic card, you might have a hard time streaming that without, you know, stuttering and delays. 
So go on to the video, you can actually drop your quality down in the bottom right hand side. You'll see that like little cog wheel. Open that up and you'll see different streams that are available. So drop your stream down, see if that helps. If you don't have a like a home computer with a dev dedicated dedicated defecated devil level dedicated <laughs> if you don't have a big computer with a hard um, get that out of my ear because it's echoing I don't know how I managed to even talk with that in my ear because it's I keep echoing right and so you need a, a decent computer to get high stream and not stutter to be able to run those graphics and to have the memory to do that and so that's a huge one. I, I, I forget to mention that so many times. So let's keep rolling here. I got so much. Am I going to get through it? We'll never know. Okay, so seems he said that one that nobody could get, nobody got hurt from all the nuclear testing and all the nuclear everything in America. No one got sick. No one got injured. I put together that little one I put together a long while ago. Let me play it anyway. Make sure it gets from my audio. And just so you got just that audio. Here we go. This is a one minute clip I put together a few days ago. And here we go. You would get more radiation if you were on a plane with a smoke detector at 50,000 feet getting a CAT scan and a dental x ray, drinking a glass of water with 9,000 becquerels of potassium 40 in it, and a bad tub of ocean water with natural uranium 238 and rocks release, releasing natural uranium 238. And other rocks with natural radon in them with the plane curtains up eating a banana than you would if you were standing in the middle of any spot where man-made radioactive fallout occurred. And even less if you're on a space station than you would get if you stood in the middle of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. And if you do, if you do get radiation fallout, all you have to do is smile. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I had myself planted in the middle of that video. It was my fault. But I actually removed it in, in the live stream itself and then clicked on what was left over and got rid of it. And hopefully it didn't hang up on us. Hi, Pink Sapphire! Woo! We love Pink. You don't stop. You got so much work done in the last couple of years. I'll take me a decade to catch up to you. And we really appreciate everything you do with your pink. Don't think we don't. We don't give you enough credit. And if I can catch you, I like to put you up on a pedestal. And see, I stutter when I got that thing in my ear because there's a delay and I'm waiting for myself to stop repeating. I give pink a hard time. I'm sorry, pink. Forgive me. And if not, then <coughs> I'll make it up to you. I swear. Send me somebody you don't like. I'll defecate on them. Just kidding. I'll do worse. <laughs> I'll blog them. So, I want you to think about the Drudge Report. Now, the Drudge Report is the biggest aggregator of media out there. And what they do is they aggregate all mainstream media. And that's what E&E &E News does. And so, E&E, &E, this is a funny one. I just want to put it out to you. So, I want you to make you understand what I'm telling you, just to sink it into you. E&E &E News just aggregates everybody. And so they got CNN's headline of a 45-foot wave off of Japan's coast on July the 9th, right? You see July the 9th right there, July the 9th. Now, I want you to, to think about CNN or E&E &E News. If you go down that, you'll see they got the Weather Channel, Japan Times. They got a whole bunch of other links down below about the weather, okay? So it's not just... CNN, they got, that's what they do on their site, they got all these multiple links underneath it. Now a lot of times I just read you the headline, I don't go down because I have so much and I'm pulling it on you. Now two days later, they, CNN had another headline, breaking news, strong 6.8 quake off of Fukushima and a tsunami warning issue. Now let me go back again to 45 foot waves on the 9th. And then two days later, a typhoon or uh, the tsunami. Now, it came out a few hours later. I haven't got that clip in there. But anyway, everybody will tell you the tsunami was a foot high. Now, think about what they told you. Just think about what they said to you. They said there was a 45 foot wave, and then a day and a half later, there was a one foot wave. So, was the wave 46 foot high now? 
because it was 45 foot high, the weather didn't change. So how could they tell there was a one foot tsunami when there was a 45 foot wave? See? Was he on the shoreline? He said, wait now, it's 45 foot high, tsunami's coming any minute. Oh, look, that one was 46. So there's something really, really, really weird about that. And I just wanted to put it out there. Now I'm going to jump over to the whip repository. I just wanted to run this one a little bit further one more time. Not that I'll ever give it up. Here's a clip coming up. Uh, they're talking about the truck fire. I'll get my microphone out of it. And before I go, I'll just have a look over, make sure I catch anybody. On, uh, hi, Sylvia. And that's for art. Just make sure Tom Sims. And Thunder, Cats Alive. Dana played the video clips and certs like his guitar, bro. I like the tune you're playing, Dana. Thank you. Here we go again with the WIP repository, just a short clip. A fire has shut down the WIP site in Carlsbad. Officials say a truck hauling salt caught fire about 11 this morning in an area underground. All employees were quickly evacuated. But several were taken to the hospital for potential smoke inhalation. WIP officials say their emergency plan was put into place immediately. Now remember that smoke up in the background? Right? Mama Knox had the video up there. And I done a video about it. And that smoke, that truck fire, they had to evacuate the rip, uh, rip, the WIP repository for nine days because of a truck fire. Because the truck fire is so scary, right? It's so dangerous. It's so wicked. And then they had to transfer all the fuel out. Uh, nine days later, there was a radiation release and they started transferring the fuel somewhere else, right? To New Mexico. From New Mexico to Texas. But that truck fire, the current August, is Carlsbad, New Mexico's uh, local newspaper. And so they got that truck fire. Look at it. The, the WIP repository is half a mile underground. The WIP repository is 55 football fields. If you're a football field away, 300 feet away from a truck fire, even though you're underground, you still wouldn't be worried about it because the air blows it and sucks it up to all the vents, right? So why did they evacuate it for nine days? And does a truck fire burn for nine days? Does a truck fire burn for days and days like that? No. And then they put out a model, one of the first models I've ever seen on TV. See the banana? Look at a banana. Now a banana is homeostasis. If it's got potassium 40, if you eat it, you off gas the same amount. And so you eat a banana, you can't hold any more. It's called homeostasis. Look it up. And potatoes are like that, potato chips. The food you eat, your clothing is homeostasis. You can't get any more potassium 40. But if you got uranium 234, 235, 238, if you got cesium 137, it, then it's there forever. Battery acid can't get rid of it. You just liberate it. It's created in the bowels of hell, right? And so I think that that has to be shoved down their throats more often because that's what happened. They had they never had a truck fire. They had a release on the sixth, not the fourteenth. On the fourteenth, they fessed up to it. It wasn't a truck fire. It was a radiation release. It wasn't a panic. You could have got on the other side of the truck fire in the bottom of that mine. The wind is sucking it out. Think about 55 football fields size caverns. Think about how big this place is, all the trucks going back and forth, how big it is, the roof it is, how much air volume is going through it. They spent billions of dollars on it. And a truck fire, you got to evaporate it? Well, what do I know? But I can tell you one thing. Anybody comes in here with a truck, I'm going to go out and smack them around and tell them that a truck fire is so dangerous they have to abandon 55 football fields for nine days and that I don't appreciate them driving that in my country. And we don't want to have to evacuate British Columbia any sooner than Fukushima is going to force us. So once again, a banana can't hurt you. But they put it in the, they put it in the charts or in the graphs to trick you. The foliage you see started on the 6th. It's real. It reached 1600 degrees down there. There was 20 or 30 or 40 people that inhaled radioactive particles. 
And if you ingest a single radioactive particle in the future, you will get some kind of cancers, tumors, leukemias, depending on how much you inhaled. It's hard to inhale a single particle. You're usually inhaling many more. Uh, that's the tragedy of this story many times over. Once again, the government uh, reported that nuclear waste at 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. If it hits 1600 degrees Fahrenheit at um, Fukushima or any other reactor, it's going to melt through. So what happened at WIP to create 1600 degree Fahrenheit temperatures when it's trans... Uh, what is it? Transgeric... Uh, I can't even remember the word for it. It's supposed to be just tools and gloves and overalls, right? Yeah, you put that a half mile under the ground where well, you leave everything up. So what it was is they were putting that extraordinary radioactive material. They never told anybody. They knew that if anything goes wrong, they have to abandon ship and they can never get back in there. And not only that, at some point, the whole bloody area is devastated till the end of time. Now, they had done a lot of nuclear testing. One of the first nuclear tests was done just down not very far from Carlsbad, New Mexico. Oh, <coughs> let me keep going. So, uh, Japan wants to start up a new reactor. And it's the Sendol reactor, I believe. I'm going to make this bigger. Let me drag that up here. And I'll come over for a second. Keep an eye on Ting. Rami Dana, you're set. Mother Earth, the bearer of life. Uh, Sylvia, where's my favorite gorilla? Standing Foot says. Radiation Network. MSVS, I did quite a few takes last night for like about three hours. It was still on the lights out of Japan, but heavy overcast, so no new direction on light. I start to grow a new willy. They slap each other with a banana. Miss Milky, and if they cremate your body, it re releases radioactive particle back into the atmosphere. Right. So if you die, and they cremate you, you're going to really, really step back into the environment. You tell I was Irish? No, I'm just a mongrelized Canadian. My parents were British, and they were British up until 1949, even though they were in Canada. We joined Canada in 1949. I'm from Newfoundland originally. And that doesn't matter. That's not what we're here for. But okay, let's get back on track. But I do have a strong accent, yes. I can't get rid of it. I, d I have calmed it down. It's probably one-fifth of what it was years ago. It was really slang, all slang, because I come from a little tiny community, and they created their own kind of mongrelized English. So bringing Japan a step closer to restarting, you demented, wicked, horrible people. Why would you do that? you got your entire country is radiated. And you won't tell them, and you want to restart something until you have another earthquake and another devastation. It's heartbreaking. Abe is out of control. He's out of control. It gotten, don't care. It said the government is ready to reactivate any of the idle reactors. Probably just fear monitoring, because that's what they're really good at. But we like to promote the radioactivation. No, if the NRA... I just played your clip of the NRA saying that the reactors were perfect at Fukushima. How can you trust them anywhere else? How could you even consider it for anywhere else? Uh, let me jump again. Plutonium 238, 239, 240 detected at Fukushima Playground in August. And the date on that was September the 3rd, 2011. TEPCO says they consider it from a triple meltdown. Yet even a day, you probably won't even admit it. But you get all these headlines where he admitted it to a certain bunch, and it got reported, but then it got buried, and we don't hear about it anymore. It's shocking what's really going on. Let me come back to that one again. Tokyo doctor. Tokyo should no longer... He moved out of there. Tokyo should no longer be inhabited. And everyone is a victim of Fukushima. It's not just a little bit. I've covered it extensively. I'm not going to try to cover it tonight. But when you inhale these radioactive particles, you, you, they sequester in your organs. They sequester in your lungs. They sequester in your blood. They get in your brains. They cause all kinds of cancers. And that kind of reminds me, uh, there's another headline of uh, 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 Curricum. I can't even pronounce things tonight. I'm lost. 
kills throat cancer cells. Now DCA below, I've seen it do some extraordinary stuff in the last few weeks, it's some extraordinary results. I've read all the studies on it that I can get my hands on. It's been repeated many times. There's links below about this. It's a harmless, it's benign, it's innocuous uh, mineral. And you can go see a compound chemist at your pharmacist. Ask if you got a compound chemist, call them up and go visit that one. And you want DCA, they know what it is. You don't need a prescription. There's a bit of a stutter at the time. You don't need, uh, there's no patent on this. You don't need no doctor. You can walk in off the street and get it. You don't have to show no IDs. It's not harmful. But it is caustic in a way. Uh, and like if you put it on, say, a word, it'll burn for like 20 minutes. Uh, and what it does is, it's not like a normal burning. It's a weird one, apparently, but it gets rid of it. it there's no peeling, no bleeding or anything like that. It starts just a little tiny bit, and it, it will start to disappear. It's the weirdest damn thing that you've ever seen. I got a number of people in town now, and they play with it all the time. <laughs> it's harmless. It's like drinking, yeah. drinking a coffee is worse than taking it. But you want to mix it with water. You have to drink water with it because it's a powerful one, and it might upset you or your stomach, right? Um, here's another headline I wanted to throw out there. Containment building flooded at Nebraska new plant in order to cool the fuel rods. So in order to save everything in Nebraska, not that it matters, no offense to anyone in Nebraska, they filled up the containment unit with water. The industry is completely out of control. You know, they have people out there lying, we covered that earlier if you're joining the stream now. Uh, Bulgaria had lost today's headline, I think it was, yeah, July 17, 2014, a container for a construction cut site containing radioactive material. And there's two million industries dependent upon the nuclear industry. So they're very powerful. But that should never be out there. It should never be used. There was a hundred other ways to do the same job, but they shoved that stuff out there. Let me come back. Um, what was wrong with me tonight? Curriculum. I'm losing it tonight. Now the video, the picture alongside of it is a postcard from the 50s in Las Vegas of the Desert Inn. And that's a picture in the background of a detonation. That's not Photoshop in 1954. No. That's a detonation. And they want you to, that, that's a postcard. Come see the detonations. Because they do so many down in that area. Now here's another clip coming up uh, from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and we're going to let that play out. I'm going to jump to it and I'll come and talk about it. The real experts are certain the amount of cesium in the plume is not and will not be a threat to marine or human health 5,000 miles from Fukushima. If we get up to about seven uh, becquerels per cubic meter, that's beyond what I'm actually expecting. That would be a thousand times less than what we're allowed to have in our drinking water. The real experts are certain the amount of cesium in the plume. So you can look at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, which is a hundred times more strontium because of Fukushima's fuel, because it's such a highly volatile fuel. It's MOX fuel. It's missiles left over from a chain reactions. I'm sorry, missiles left over from the Cold War that were sitting in silos, and they took them to Japan. They took the uranium plutonium, not the missile, but the uranium plutonium, and they put it through chain reactions again and again and again. And every time it's a couple of million times worse, the gammas, the betas, the alphas, the x rays, the neutrons. And now, he's saying the ocean. Now, there's 50 square miles a day going into the ocean. That's uh, about a thousand gallons a minute, or say four thousand. Who knows? Say a thousand gallons a minute, minimum, or say it's a thousand pounds of radioactive dye, like they use in St. Paddy's Day. Think of that every minute, a thousand pounds. And so there's 50 square miles a day. There's 1.8 squillion, squillion million square miles. 1.8 million square miles over the last uh, three and a half years. And you're talking 50 square miles a day, but you're talking the ocean, it only takes 130 days to cross. And every day beyond it was another plume. And so there's 120 numbers behind the 130-day plume. And so every day there's another plume shows up. 
and then 1,200 days later, the ocean is circulating it. I know I keep telling everybody that I keep driving that out there. You got to think of St. Paddy's Day. That's about 25 pounds. There's a hundred, a thousand pounds a minute coming out of Fukushima. There's 1,440 St. Paddy's a day going into the ocean, and those radioactive materials. Let me get, like I'm telling you, this max fuel. You remember what they said? There was no integrity damage to the building. Do you remember that? If you didn't watch it, let me bring up that uh, video again, so you can or picture again, so you can see what I'm talking about. Is there any damage to that or not? Why shouldn't you get angry? Why shouldn't you get upset? Why shouldn't you be indignant? Why shouldn't you f have? Why shouldn't they get blowback? Why shouldn't they have someone get up in their face? Why shouldn't you call them a lying, manipulative, scum of the earth? Criminal. Why ain't the police arresting him? Why is he allowed to get up in Congress? Why doesn't Congress arrest a person? You don't know who I'm talking about. Let me play it again one more time for everybody. And let me get rid of my clip into it. I'm going to play that one more time because that is extraordinary what he's saying, right? Make sure my audio is gone. Okay, here we go. One more time with that two minute clip. Well, thank you. Now, with regard to this uh, pool storage, just because, um, Mr. Uh, Ostendorf, just because uh, the rods are kept in a pool storage doesn't mean it's going to blow up or cause a fire, does it? That, that is correct. The, uh, if I can make two technical points there, uh, studies of the pools at Fukushima, as the chairman mentioned earlier in, her, in response to a question, to date we're not aware of any damage to the pools at Fukushima Daiichi as far as structural integrity. Uh, the spent fuel pool study that we based our decision on uh, had some significant conservatisms. We could certainly provide those for the record, but significant conservatisms that uh, showed that we were taking almost worst case analyses and look at the integrity. And I'd also add that uh, the current initiatives being taken by. So, no damage. So, he's perjured himself. Where's the journalists? Where's your media? Where's the people we depend upon to flush this out? Why is it that we have to do that, right? Why do we have to come here and say that this is based upon a single release from number one? This is not based upon a daily release. These models, these, <coughs> excuse me, these models are just based upon a single release. And what I told you tonight is not a game, it's not a joke. There's no phone, but we got the job, and that's we you know we got to do it, and so there's no turning back. There's no there's no walking away. I know sometimes I get down and I get out, and but you know me, you know me that I'm blowing off steam. You know what I'm about. You know there's nothing else I can possibly do. There's nothing I would rather do than come out and gut these creatures, and at least have somebody right that can counter what they're saying. This whole video today is based upon what that man said, what Timmy said. The link is below to his video at the Congress. And the other ones are from the NRC uh, update uh, six weeks ago or something like that. And I've covered that. And you'll find links under those videos to the actual uh, other one. And it's just, uh, my stream is blinking. So that's okay. We'll we'll wind it down. Let me check and see how long this has been going on. Forty-eight minutes. It's a respectable stream, folks. Miss Milky, I'll give you a call tomorrow. I got to go back to town, and tomorrow uh, get a few odds and ends. And so I'll touch bases with you. I'll send you a text message, and then I'll call you so you can know what my number is when it shows up. And then we'll take it from there. We'll get on Skype or something. We'll get on whatever works for you, best for you and see if we can start connecting. And then we can get ready and do a stream once it figures out how to connect it all. And I'm not sure I'm going on. My stream is blink, blink, blink. Okay. So let me see if there's anything I forgot about. Off the top of my head. No. Hang on. Let me double check here. Bring this up. Um, Japanese correspondence, very scary. The officials are trying to brainwash the public about the Fukushima crisis. 
and the human impact is becoming more clear. There's a very big and serious issue here. And like the government whip, uh, I'll read that one, 1600 degree Fahrenheit at the whip plutonium releases, during the whip plutonium releases. That's not gloves. That's not uh, shoe boxes. That's not, you know, like overalls. That's not tools. That's radioactive, real radioactive, real dangerous, real, real scary radioactive materials that were snuck in there. Right? And then they lied about the truck, they lied about the fallout, they showed you a banana in the model. And all we're trying to do is show you the facts so you can make up your own mind, you can research things and come to your proper conclusion so you can protect your family, so you can do things, so you can fight back, so you can call them up, so you can send them emails. Anything that you're capable of doing, you know, as, as uh, I think I'll have the site, everything done by Monday for my dot org. Everything's paid for, everything's up and running. I just haven't been able to get to it, I'm trying to organize and conquer what I'm doing here before I move over to that one. And so tomorrow, another thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to set up three streams for the next few days so I don't have to do that because <laughs> that can take a long time sometimes. And do them all at one time for each day, and then add on to it each day the new stuff that's showing up. So each day during the live stream, when I do the live streams, I'll be bringing in like I am regularly now, the headlines I'm snatching each day, right? And more and more I'll be able to catch up. But I have tens of thousands of headlines that I've collected over the years that I still never got to, and won't, but I will try to get to it. And you know, when I got a slow day, I can bring in some of that stuff too. So it should always be a different show. Should always be really interesting. That'd be awesome. Not really, because it's going <laughs> to shut me up. But I'll ask the right questions. I know how to do an interviews. I know how to shut up, turn my mic off, <laughs> don't cut people off the routine. I've been saying, I won't do that to people, and let's see if I tell the truth <laughs> in the near future. But it was a good stream. I'm back in track. Don't mind me. I had such a rough time with software. I banged my head against tables and walls and steal just everything trying to get through it pass out crash and burn get up roll my eyes say that's okay i'll get you now you're gonna get it now you little software and that's all i can do but what i am going to try to do when the dot org comes up i want you to, to remember that things have changed because i'm trying to do all comedy after that no more i need help so i got it out of my system this time the blogs won't carry me. You won't be hearing that from me no more. Because it's going to be positive. It's going to be come out laughing their faces. Here's the evidence. Have a nice day. See you soon. And I'll be back, right? Good night, everybody. Irene Arell, Matthew, Clear Beer, Irene Arell, Original Punisher, Miss Milk and Clown, Standing Foot, Mickey Smith, MSVS in HD, Keep Them Coming, Clan Beer Victory. I live near Rocket Dine and the NV test site. Ah, they're going to be glowing or mutating soon. So there we go. We'll catch everybody on the rebound. We'll see you tomorrow again for some kind of stream. It'll be different again and a lot of fun. We'll do it again. See you folks.